بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, to uh, address is uh, this title, A Journey to Eternity. Uh, and life is a journey, and we always take journeys, and uh, there's a beginning point and there's an end point. You want to get to a destination. So when we go, if we live in San Francisco, so if you want to go to Los Angeles, we start from San Francisco, and then we end up in Los Angeles. And on the way, there's, you know, Vesta points and gas stations and, and places we stop and we we reflect and we, we, we kind of relax and have tea and coffee and all that stuff. That is, in reality, our life is a journey like that. We have a few stops here and there, and then uh, we get to the destination. So the great Quranic question is, where then are you going? So, oh, human being, where are you going? Where do you think you're going? And this is a great question that many of the Gnostics, many of the spiritual masters and all of the scholars, they were constantly grappling with this idea of, where am I going? Where have I come from? So Maulana Rumi said, Sorry, I just wanted to fix this. Uh, he said, He said, All day and all night, I sit and I think and I reflect about this thing. Why am I unaware of the state of my inner being, my heart, my soul? Because the heart and soul are saying things. They are singing a song and they are telling us something, but we can't hear it because we're disconnected. Where have I come from? Where am I at? And where then am I going? Will you show my place of permanent residency because he knew that he is not in this world as a permanent resident. None of us are here as a permanent resident. We're all here on, a, on visiting visa. We got our visa. We came here. We're here for a period of time and then we depart. So he said, then he realized this. He said, I know who I am. He said, I am a bird from the meadows of paradise. I'm a bird from paradise. I'm not from this planet made out of dirt. That's not where I'm from. This soul of mine, they have put it in this cage, this body, for just a few days to carry the soul, right? It's just a cage. This is what it is. So then he says, Ya Allah, show me my place. How did I get here? But the great question that Ruby is asking, how do I get back to where I'm supposed to be? How do I get to this destination that Allah has, has, has uh, decreed for me? He said, Man I didn't come here by myself. I didn't come here. I was brought here. So since I didn't come here, I there's no way I can find my way back. Like you can only find your way back from a place that you came and you're, okay, I can make it. I know where I came from. I can go back. But he's saying, no, no, I was brought here. Who has brought me? Allah has brought me here, right? The one who has brought me here, surely he will take my hand and take me back to my watan, to my place of permanent residency. Where divine presence, and this is the or this is the this is the rule of life that you have to know. These are the questions, the great question we ask, and from those questions, see, Rumi said, "Har kujo mushkil jawab on He said, "Wherever there are difficulties, that is where the answer will go. If you have difficult questions, answer will go. Go. The answers will come. Right." Answer will come. He said, Har kujo kishtis ab on He said, wherever there's boats, the water goes there where the boats are, right? You build a boat, the water will come, right? When Nuh Alayhi built a boat, there was not a flood, right? So this is how, so in order to find a way home, real home, right? We must connect with Allah. 
And that connection is through love. We must love Allah. We must love Allah because there is a one button home GPS that we have inside of us. It's called the heart. And Rumi said, Love is the spiritual GPS to the mysteries of God. Love is the spiritual GPS to the mysteries of God. So this one button home, you press it and it takes you right there from here to the divine presence. From here to the divine presence. But we have to know where we came from. We have to, if you don't know where you came from, you won't know where you're going. And this is the journey of the human being. It begins, most of us, we think it begins here on planet Earth, but that's not where it starts. It began before the creation of human being, before the creation of Adam, alayhi salam. When Allah created the, uh, the soul of the human being, so all our soul, all the souls of human beings, from Adam, alayhi salam, to us, our children, our grandchildren, all the way to the end of time, till the last person, all of the souls were created and Allah has gathered all of them, right? They gathered all of them and they were all like little tiny souls. And Allah asked us, this is a day in the Quran. This is a day that it actually happened. With أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ When your Lord, right? And when your Lord brought forth the descendant of Adam, the children of Adam from his loin, all of them, all of the children of Adam were brought forth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them and, 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 and put them in front, all of them in one area, right? And they say it's in, 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 in the valley in, in, the, uh, in Mount Araf, where Arafah is, when you go to Hajj, right? So, and what did it say? What did Allah say? Allah said, Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala shahidna. Am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? They said, Bala, yes, indeed you are. They testify, they bear witness, all of the soul, your soul, my soul, our parents, our children, every soul testify in front of Allah that yes, you are my Lord. And this is why atheism is an alien thing. In the history of human creation, because our souls have already testified to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They testified and they say, Yes, you are our Lord. How could we not how could we not now say, Oh, God doesn't exist? And this is this is one of the, the tragedies of our time with atheism, because people, you know, the people who believe in God, and majority of the people on this planet, Alhamdulillah, they all believe in God. Majority of the people, they be, why do we believe in God? Something we haven't seen, something we can't taste, we can't see. There's, you know, there's no senses. People say, oh, if you don't see it, how do you believe in it? Because our soul saw it. Our soul saw God, the light of God on this day, Yawmul Alas, the day of Alas, the day of affirmation. And we all said, yes, you are our Lord. This is the first, create. The, it's the first stage. There's five lives in the human being. This is the first life of the human being. This is before the creation of the earth. This is before the creation of Adam alayhi salam. This is when Allah created only the souls of the human being. So Allah asked, he said, am I not your Lord? We all said, yes, you are, right? Why did Allah do that? He's, he's answering here. In taqulu yawm al inna kunna an hadha ghafileen. We did so lest you should say on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection, we were unaware of this. I didn't know. So you can't say you didn't know because your soul knows. How do we connect to our soul to get that knowledge back into our heart, into our mind, into our bodies? This is the journey. This is why it's important to know where we came from and how we were created. So Allah created the souls first. We were in divine presence and we testified that you are our Lord. This is the first life. And it was a long time, millennia and millennia, it, it, it went on. Until then Allah created the earth and the heavens and, and the plants and the minerals and the animals and then the human being in the form that we are right now. Adam alayhi salam was created and then his spirit came in from this place that the Yawmul Alas happened. 
came in into the body of Adam. And this is when the, the, uh, the, the second life of the human being begins in this world. So what happened when, when, when we were uh, in the womb of our mother, right? When we were in the womb of our mother, something happened. Maulana Rumi said that when the X and Y chromosome or, or XX chromosome for a girl or for a boy, they come together, it's a place called nafir. It's right next to the womb. It's called nafir in Arabic. In English, called salpinx. And then from there, it moves into the womb. He said, in the nafir, when you became a, something inexistent, the XY chromosome got together and you became a, a male or you became a female, in that moment, he said, said, he said, from the moment I got cut off from this place where I was in a divine presence, I got cut off and my, this soul came into the womb of the mother, into the womb, and went into the nafir. He said, the first cry began there. That's when we start our first cry. He said, subhanAllah, I left a place of perfection, a place of tranquility and beauty and ihsan and everything was just happening perfectly. Now I'm here. Right? I need the umbilical cord and all of these. This is, and this is a separation from Allah. So the first time human beings shed tears, according to Rumi, is in the womb of the mother. And then we come in, we are born. What is the first thing that the baby do when they're born? They cry. Why do they cry? Because now they're distant even more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's, it's crying out of just being as from a station of qurba, closeness to the station of distancing themselves now realizing that we are on this planet earth so what is this planet earth where you come in in this earth you have three life three stages the stages of life you have childhood youth old age and then you die that's for every one of us right if you're lucky to go through the stations of life if you're lucky so you go through child what do we do during childhood we memorize we learn other manners right we, we observe our elders to see how do they walk, how do they talk. This is how you learn adab from your elders. Like we were never taught a book on adab. We were never taught a book on adab. We were taught, we just looked at our parents and our uncles and the teachers and we learned manners in, uh, from them. So then uh, these are the years that you memorize. Things that you memorize when you're young, you would never forget. Things you memorize in, in the old days, it's like riding on the beach and the water comes in, it's gone, right? on the sand on the beach. So when in the young age, it's like carving on the stone. I still remember poems that I memorized when I was five, six years old. And I would never forget them, inshallah. But the things I memorized recently, I, it comes in, it goes out. So what is this life of this world? One of the great poets of India, Abdul Qadir Bedel, who has a diwan in Persian, in Farsi, he summarized the entire life of human being in one line. He said, Aqibat shame javani he said, no, my friend, that this, this uh, night of youthful night of yours, right? It will turn into a dawn of old age. People, when they're young, they don't think they, can get, they will get old. They think they will be young forever. This youth and this energy will be there forever. But they don't know that it's gonna be, uh, this is going to be gone. He said, when you start a fire, he said, it starts with smoke. And then it becomes a flame, gentle flame. And then the flame rises, right? And then the flame goes down. And then it becomes just coal. And then it becomes ashes, gray. And then done. That is our life. We are like fire. When we first start, when we first come into the world, we can't see anything. Like human beings, they can't, the eyes can't see. They see everything blurry, children. Everything is blurry. What happens when you start a fire and smoke comes out? Everything is blurry. Like when you make barbecue, right? The smoke makes everything blurry. It's, you can't see it. That's childhood. That's the start of the fire. Then a little bit of fire. You can put your hand on it and get warm. That's like the first few years of your child, right? You're there two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're, it's beautiful. You hug them. They come to you, Baba, Mama, right? And then the fire gets higher. And then it's the teenage years, right? They become like fire. You can go a little bit closer. You feel like you're getting burned, right? 
And then what happens? Old age, the fire goes back down. It goes back down. And it becomes gentle. It's old age. You become just like a child again. You need glasses. You can't see anymore. Everything is fuzzy now, right? And then what happened? Gray hair comes. That's ashes. The fire goes down and you become ashes. And then it's gone. This is the life of a human being. Start a fire, let it end, and observe it and see your life in it. Because that is how quickly you will pass. So this is the life of this world. So this world, what can this world give us? Right? So Ahmed Zarouk said that this is what he learned from Junaid al-Baghdadi. He said that dunya darul hammin wa ghammin wa ibtilayn wa fitna. That dunya can give you only uh, grief, depression, tribulation, and strife. That's all it can give you. Look at our lives. Look at our lives. Those of us, like, if, if you were born and raised in Afghanistan and came to this country, what did you, what did you experience? Ham, gham, ibtila, fitna. Just wars, depression, sadness, civil strife. That's all we experience. And here, right now, there are people that are worried about their children. There are people who are worried about their health. There are people who are worried about their, their finances. There are people who are worried about their, their, their sibling that they can't visit, about their parents, that they're another state, another country. It's always hum and hum. Anxieties are always there. You can't get rid of it because as long as you're in this world, this is what the world can give you. But now Maulana Rumi says something very beautiful. He said, since you know that this world can only give you tribulation, grief, trials, and civil strife, and depression, and sadness. Why don't you travel to the universe that has only happiness and joy? And that is inside. That is in your heart. That's the travel inside. And Rumi said, He said, let me tell you what happened to me. He said, I live, I turn my heart into an abode of happiness and I live in extremely, in a joyous and, and, and complete joy and bliss. I have no grief. I have no sadness. I have no anguish. I don't have any. Why? Because I stayed away from everything that's bitter in this world. All of the bitter the things, things that are sour in this world. I stayed away from it. How did he stay away from it? He took a journey inside. Once you start going inside, you would see that there is a paradise inside of you. The paradise is already here. You can go and start experiencing your paradise inward. And you can see the light. Each Magu, Rumi said, when I saw traveling inside, I saw this illuminating moon. Where did they come from? And the moon said, I'm you. This is you. You are the moon. You, you've been covering me with dark clouds. Welcome. Welcome to the inward travel. And Rumi said, whoa, what an amazing travel is this to go inward. So that's where you find tranquility. That's where you find beauty and ihsan and, and, and complete instead of happiness and joy. So you have to get, you have to understand that this world is not our permanent place. It's not our real home. Our real home is paradise. And, uh, and if you settle for this planet made out of dirt, you have done a disservice to yourself. You have done a disservice to yourself. Rumi said, it's like a man who sees a flood coming, right? And it, who, who goes out and sees a, a riot. Some of us grew up, we, we saw some of the riots, right? The riot in LA when they burned down the whole town. We saw it on TV, right? Uh, Rodney King riot when we were young kids, youngsters. Uh, would you open the store, he said? He said, Ey, there to darin gharat taraj chididi. He said, oh, my, my, my friend, my brother, my sister, I'm just wondering at you, what have you seen in this place of riot that you're opening up a shop, a store in the middle of the riot? You're opening up a store in the middle of the riot? 
در سیل کسی خانه کند از گل و از خاک he said have you ever heard something so absurd that somebody something so foolish that somebody will make a house made out of a uh, mud a mud house in front of a flood he sees a flood coming in he goes wait a second let me build a mud house in front of this flood who would do that nobody in their right mind would do that dar dam kase da nakhorat hech chidi have you heard anybody eat the food that is inside the trap why do they put that food inside the trap because they know nobody's going to eat that the bird is going to come to eat it it grabs it this dunya is a trap and the food is inside the trap nobody will conquer this dunya nobody will possess. alexander the great wanted to do that right i'm going to conquer the world i'm going to conquer the sun from sunrise to sunset he traveled from it. and then in afghanistan they stabbed him right with a dagger poison his dagger and he died in india right nobody is going to conquer anything you can't the only thing you can conquer is yourself when you conquer yourself you have conquered the universe not just the world the entire universe is yours because this is the high station of contentment because al qina akanzun la yafna the prophet said contentment is an inexhaustible treasure house so rumi's advice is don't fall for this world don't fall for this world uh, is going to trick you it's going to trick you it's a trap right go inward and find yourself because once you find yourself it is paradise so what are we supposed to do we are supposed to learn as 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 young age right memorize and practice why are we so practicing at a young age because practice make permanent that's what practice does it becomes permanent you will never leave it all this action you start when you're young if you pray when you're young if you make zikr when you're young if you do all these beautiful action when you're young you will continue until you die right this is the nature of of uh, of this uh, of uh, um starting at young age at youth you the energy the energy that has god has given you you spend it for positive you can actually earn so much reward during the time that you're 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 a young man so spend your time spend your youth your youth in in uh, in uh, in service and in in of creation in the service of creator right uh khayyam umar khayyam said ibadat be just khidmat khalq nis the tasbih and sajada and dal nis he said my friend worship because people think worship is just prayer just reading quran that's amazing worship we, we nobody's going to say it's not but there are other worship too he said worship is to serve the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said it is to serve the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give a hand to a person who's fallen right to give a hand to the person who's falling and then in old age what do you do you get ready to meet your lord right readiness is all as shakespeare said you get ready to meet your lord and that you can you can't get ready in old age you start at the young age and you build it in during the time of your youth and it ripes when you get old so that's the life of dunya then we leave this world and we die now death is not the end of our life the soul doesn't die the body dies right so the body is just like rumi said it's a cage that the soul has been put in so now it flies out it comes out cuz the cage breaks down and it goes out now you go to the third life which is called the life of barzakh the life of barzakh is the grave is barzakh means interspace not here not there it's between the two worlds so we go into barzakh And grave is an amazing place. Hassan al Basri said, "What an amazing place is the grave! Is the end of this life and the beginning of next next life? Is that bridge between the two worlds? And everybody will have an experience of the grave. Now, the people are afraid of graves. They have grave phobia. I was one of those people when I was young, because of all the things that we hear, the stories that you know, snakes and scorpions. What are those snakes and scorpions? Those are your actions." those are your speech rumi said when you open your mouth i would know if it is if your mouth is inside of it if it is a candy store or a place where snake and scorpion resides if you open your mouth i would instantly know if it's a candy store or a place of scorpions and snakes in, in other words what you say has the 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 physical words has a metaphysical reality 
right? And those become something that will come and haunt us. So that's why we have to be really careful about uh, about uh, the uh, what we say. So people who have um, people who have great phobia, one of the the thing you can do is to get rid of that is listen to Surah Al-Mulk, Surah 67 of the Qur'an. There's a beautiful hadith, min al Qurani thalathuna ayah. The Prophet said in the Qur'an, there's a, a, a surah that has 30 ayah, right? And this will, uh, this will also, this will get rid of uh, your phobia, but it will make shifa'a. This, this surah will make shifa'a until a man is forgiven completely, right? Until Allah forgives them, the surah will make shafa'a for you. And it will uh, get rid of your, your great phobia. So surah 67, to listen to it until you memorize it. If you listen every day, inshallah, you will memorize it. The next life, the fourth life, is after the, the, the grave uh, you spent. In the grave, there, there are two groups of people. One are the evil people, one are the good people. The good people, when they're asked the question, who is your Lord? Uh, what is your religion and who's your prophet? They answer because they, they, they love the prophet. They know the religion. They pray. They don't have to be scholars in ulama. They just have to be people who practice it. Then Allah says, look to your right and, you, and, and the dead. They look in a, in a spiritual uh, a, a hole, will, like a tunnel would appear that will go to your house in paradise. So you would see your final residing place your final place of permanent residency in paradise you would see it and 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 the scent of paradise will come into the grave and you smell and you would it's it's a sleep uh in the hadith says that like the like the bride that sleeps on the night of her wedding a, a tranquil beautiful sleep right that you'll be sleeping and smelling this is why when you go to Uhud, like say the shuhada in medina when you go visit Bibi Khadija's uh, grave in Mecca and places where the prophets and the saints are buried, you can smell the scent of paradise coming from their grave. And, and um, I testify to, to smelling that in, in many places uh, in the world that, that I travel, alhamdulillah. So the fourth life is the life of the Day of Judgment. Now, Day of Judgment, although it's the last day, that's what the Quran says, la, it's the last day because in paradise there is no sun. One of the nature of the sun is it bothers you. That's why you can't stay in the sun for more than a period of time. If you say you get sunburned, right? People go to the beach and they stay and then they come back. We go back to the shade, right? So day of judgment is the last day with a sun. So there's a sun. In paradise, everything is in shade because paradise is about perfection. There's no extreme in anything. Everything is perfect. So this day is a long day. And one narration is 50,000 years. Another narration is 100,000 years. Uh, because everybody has to see the video of their life. So you will actually watch the movie of your life. But it's the director's cut. You would see God's version of that video. Because if you made Toba from the sins you did, those scenes will be cut off. If you have done wrong action and you made Toba, sincerely you repented to Allah and you didn't do them again, Allah will remove those scenes and your movie will be beautiful. Even though you did a lot of harams, but they will all be cut off. So everybody will see the Final Cut Pro version there. Now the, the dunya, we have the Final Cut Pro. In the Akhirah, it's just perfection of, of, of God's... Uh, it, it, it's, don't worry about the 4K and the 6K quality. It's, it's, and this is why one of the reasons Day of Judgment is so long, because everybody's watching everybody else's movie. So people want to watch everybody else's movie. I want to watch... There's a, quite a few people on my list. I want to watch their movie because I love them. Not out of hatred or something. I love them. I want to see their movies, right? Your teachers, you want to see their movies, right? You know? Uh, so in any case, you have to see that movie. So this is the day that people are really, this is uh, uh, a really difficult day. It's not an easy day. The Quran says, uh, that this is the day that uh, People would run from their parents, from their children, from their mother, from their children. Ch- like mother would run away from their child. Like how is that possible? Like what does that even mean? And this is the, this is the, if you think about coronavirus right now, COVID-19, we are running away from each other, human beings, from, from a virus. That there's a possibility that we might get it. And the possibility of getting it, then there's a mortality rate of one or two percent. But imagine that day where everything is 100%. 
This is the re- this is the real day. So people, everybody's nafsi, nafsi, me, 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 me. But even on that day, subhanAllah, for the believers, for the Muslims, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the only one who says, ummati, ummati, my ummah. He comes to the shifa'a. He comes to the rescue of his ummah. He comes to the rescue of the major sinners, right? Chikham divar ummat ra kedarat chuntu pushtivan. He said, Sa'di, rahmatullahi in the Gulistan, he says, what, what worry do the ummah have? What worry would your ummah have when they have an advocate like you on the day of judgment? That we have an advocate like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is standing behind us on the day of judgment. What, what, what worry do we have, right? Chibok as mawji bah on raki bawshad nuh kishtiban. He said, would, would the person who is in a boat worry about it when the sailor is Nuh alayhi salam? Would you worry about the, 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 the ocean when the sailor is Prophet Noah? You wouldn't worry about it. I'm with the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, right? The same way he says, what worry do you have when the Prophet is making shifa'a for you? And this is the, this is the, 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 the beauty of this religion that there's, there's rahmah of Allah even on that day, even on that day. There, then people go by the sirat. When they do the sirat, there's a bridge you have to cross between, uh, between day of judgment and into paradise. And this bridge, I mean, it's, it's, when people look, they start fainting. How are we going to cross it? It's so long, we can't even see the other side of it. And Allah says to the, to the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, how did you guys cross when you came across an ocean and a river? They said, well, we had boats. And, and this is in Hakim Samarkandi's book. Uh, he, he narrates this tradition uh, in the Sawad al-Adam. And he says, and then they, Allah says, you guys have boats as well. And he said, where are our boats? And he says, your massages are your boats. And all the mosques will come. And everyone will go to their local mosque. And it becomes like a boat. And it expands itself that all of the people who used to pray regularly in the mosque, they will fit inside this, this, this building, this, their actual mosque building. It expands and expands that everybody fits in there. Then it grows wings like an airplane. And it flies over this bridge and enters paradise. They say in a speed that when they blink, with one blink, they're in paradise. Allah's mercy is beyond the forms of the ocean. Allah's mercy is beyond the forms of the ocean. There's a story of a man on the Day of Judgment that when Allah says, Amtazu ayyuhal mujrimun, split all criminals. Just all of the criminals go on one side, all of the good people go on the other side. And the criminals, they're hell bound. And this is the day of justice. This is the day of retribution. This is the day that those people who committed crime in the name of humanity, those people who, who burned people alive, those people who lynched people, those people who, who took the rights of people, who, those who took the money of the orphans, those who raped people, those, those pedophiles, and all of these evil people in the world that have done wrong, they will pay for it because they didn't pay in this world. They bought their way out. On that day, you can't buy your way out. Or you can't. This is the day of justice. Allah is al-adil. He's just. And all of these criminals, they will go. And amongst them, there's a man. You can imagine all of these people. Amongst them, there's a man. One third of the way, he turns his face and looks back to Allah. And then they go halfway through. They're getting near the fire of hell. This man is hell bound. He turns back and looks at Allah. And then two-thirds, just before the fire of hell, he turns back and look at Allah again. Allah tells the angel, go bring that man. Allah knows the heart of the believer. Just bring that man. These are all lessons that we can learn. What can we learn? He said, oh, my servant, my wretched servant, why did you turn around? He said, when I went one-third of the way, I remember a verse from the Quran. وَرَبُّكَ غَفُورُ الرَّحْمَةِ that Allah is forgiven and he's full of mercy. I said, maybe you'll have mercy on me and forgive me. And then you didn't. So I went halfway through and then I remember another verse. Who can forgive your sins and your acts of disobedience and your ma'asiyah and on all, all the wrong that you have done? 
No one can do that except Allah. I said, maybe you'll forgive me. And then you didn't. So when we got really close to the fire, I remember another verse from your holy book. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, oh, people who have wronged yourself, because when we sin, we don't wrong God, we wrong ourselves. You have wronged yourself. Don't cut yourself from the mercy of Allah. Don't be hopeless. Don't be in a state of despair from the mercy of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah can forgive all your sin. He is Ghafoor, he is Rahim, he is a compassion, he is a forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, come back. This is a man who got his folder in his left hand and he was hell bound. Even he was pulled back. He said, go to my paradise because you had a good opinion of me. We have to have a good opinion of Allah. Allah says, I am in the opinion of my servant. If he thinks good of me, I'll manifest myself in, in good for him. Everything that he will see is good and beauty and ihsan. And if he thinks bad of me, I'll show him what he thinks of me. Have good opinion of Allah. In these times, know that even with this virus, even with this quarantine, even with losing our jobs, even with struggling with our families, with our friends, with finances, with health, with everything, know, just say, Ya Allah, it's from you. It's from you. It's from you. Whatever is from you, I'm okay. Whatever comes from you, it's fine. As long as you're pleased with me, Ya Allah. And you ask Allah to make it easy. You ask, there's a lesson. I need to learn from this. I need to learn something from this. So this is the, this is the, uh, the day of judgment. When the day of judgment, some people go to hell. People go to paradise. Paradise is eternal. There's in paradise. People, are, you know, there's different narration how old we are, 18, 21, 27, 30, 33. Allah knows the age. But when we enter paradise, because paradise is opposite of the dunya, every day you get more energy and you get more youthful instead of getting, like, older and more, like, weaker. So the, the pleasure, you get more pleasure every day because you have more energy, more youthful, more energy, more youthful, more beautiful. Everybody's beautiful. We become more beautiful by the day. So it's, you're yourself, but you are the filtered yourself. Now we know Snapchat has filter, Instagram has filter. You can put it on and everybody looks flawless. Imagine the filter that you'll be put on before you enter paradise, that everything about you from head to toe become flawless. But the essence is you. It is you. you. You're yourself, but you're filtered and you're beautiful and perfect. Every eye, every deficiency, every blemishes, all of them are removed. And everybody's like a supermodel in paradise. And paradise is a place no ears has ever heard anything like it. The sound of paradise, no beats can give you that sound. No uh, Sony can give you that sound. No Bose can give you that sound. Nothing can give you the sounds of paradise. And the colors of paradise, no eyes has ever seen anything like it. No eyes has ever laid on anything like paradise, right? And no mind has ever imagined anything like paradise, where the trunk of the trees are made out of gold and silver, where the homes are made out of bricks of gold and silver, where we kill ourselves for every home in paradise made out of bricks of gold and silver, where the pearls are hanging from trees, where the dirt of paradise is saffron. Saffron is the most expensive food on the planet. Is the most expensive food on the planet. It's dirt all over paradise. It's saffron. So this is where we go. And this is when people in their paradise, this is finally they have complete peace and tranquility. Ya Rabbi Sallim. Ya Rabbi Sallim. Ya Rabbi Sallim. Ya Allah, this is so peaceful. This is so peaceful. And Allah will ask the people who went through pain all their life, they had pain and suffering. Said, do, you have, do you remember any pain? Lol, I don't remember any pain. One breath in paradise removed, an entire life of pain is removed with one breath in paradise. Entire life of pain and suffering with one breath. You inhale, you don't even have to exhale it. You inhale the breath of paradise, all of that pain and suffering, you don't even remember. I don't remember any pain. Everything is perfect, right? This is paradise. Allahu Akbar. 
And that's the people who go to fire. Now, there are people who go to fire who are good people, but they've done a lot of wrongs. They made mistakes and they didn't make tawbah. They didn't turn to Allah. They didn't change, right? Then they have to purify. It's fire is a purification. In this world, if you want to make a sword, you put the steel into the fire and you take it out until and you hit it with a hammer until it becomes a beautiful sword. This is why those who live a pious life, it's like being in the fire in the dunya. Honestly, it's difficult. When you're young, you're a young man, and all these young, beautiful women approach you and they say, I fear Allah. I don't want to do this. It is difficult for a young man to do that. When somebody comes and everybody's drinking, you say, I don't want to drink, and you leave the party. It is difficult, but that's like being in the fire. But that's what, it, that's what makes a human being. That's what makes us amazing, that we can do that. We can turn ourselves into swords in this world so we don't have to go experience that fire. But if you don't, then we have to go to that fire and purify it because paradise is a place only the pure can go. Only the pure is, is, is pure and, and, and only the pure are allowed in there. So this is where you get uh, uh, the purity of the uh, uh, people of purity enter uh, paradise. So this is the last life. And then those people who finish uh, their time in paradise and, you know, some people spend only an hour, some people spend a, a, a year, whatever it is, time, Allah knows best. There's a river between paradise and hell. And then they, they, they dive into that river and that takes them into paradise. And at the end, the, uh, the greatest blessing of paradise is to see the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone will see Allah like we see the full moon. We will see God with a naked eye on that day, inshallah wa ta'ala. And we will be in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min al-nabiyyina wa siddiqina wa shuhadai wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. And be amongst the prophets and amongst the siddiq, the truthful, and amongst the martyrs and amongst the righteous. And what a beautiful club to be part of. What an amazing companionship to be part of. And may Allah make us amongst all of those people, inshallah ta'ala. So, um, I don't know what time it is, um, and I wanted to, one second, to see, um, um, sorry, just want to make sure that we are good over time, and if there's any questions, um, uh, maybe we can, uh, I don't see the question, and uh, our host is going to come back to get some questions, because I think we are uh, almost out of time. But John, uh, we have some uh, questions. Yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, the first question is: says, uh, one of the one of our sisters asked, "Is everything predetermined, or can we change our destiny?" Okay, that's a good question. Is everything predetermined, or can we change our destiny? Now, there's two ways of looking at the world. One is God's way. So you have God's way, and you have a human way. So the two ways of looking at the world. Don't obsess yourself with God's view. Like people want to see, okay, I want to look from God. No, that's none of our business. We have to look at life through our vision, the vision that God has given us, what Allah has told us, right? We have free choice, right? We have free will. Everybody has free will. I can, you can turn it off right now and leave this, this uh, program. That's your choice. You can stay, right? You can have a cup of tea. I can do this. Is my choice. Bismillah. I just drank some water. I had a choice. I did it, right? Now, that choice was enabled by Allah. So he, he gave me that ability to do that. Allah is the Mashiach. If Allah's Mashiach is not with the, my action, the act, I can do, I can, no matter what I do, I won't be able to drink. The fire cannot burn unless Allah permits it. The knife cannot cut unless Allah permits it, right? So it's all when we, but Allah has allowed this in the creation. For us, in the creation, for us to, uh, to uh, is because it's a world of asbab, right? It's a world of means in order to get to an end. So we have choices, but once that choice is dead, so I just drank that water. That was predestined for me. That was predestined for me. Now I have a choice to drink water again, or I don't drink the water. Okay, so I didn't drink the water. That was predestined. Once the action is dead, right, that's predestined. But until the action is alive, that's, you have a choice. 
right? The choice is it's it's very difficult to to teach over a, a short Instagram a program. Uh, but Sayyidina Ali was asked about qadr, about choice and 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 predetermined. Is, is do we have a choice or everything is predetermined, uh, or 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 we don't have it? So he said to the man, raise one of your leg. So if the man was standing, he ra- rose one of his leg. He said, raise the other one now. He said, I can't. He said, it's between the two. In other words, Rumi has a really beautiful analogy. And I think Imam Ghazali has the same analogy. Many of the scholars use it. He said, imagine a chess board. People who play chess. Uh, I love chess. I grew up playing chess. If you play chess, you have like you know you have the pawns, you have the, the you know the queen and the king, and you have the bishop, and you have the you know all of the, these these uh, um, characters on the chessboard, and then you start playing. That's life. That's your life. Now, some people might say, uh, "Why was I a, a pawn and I'm not a a, a a bishop?" You know, I wanted to be a bishop. Why did Allah put me there? Now. If, you, if you're patient and you work, you can get to the other side, you become a bishop. That's, it's all in the chessboard. All of your moves there, yes, you can go places, you can do things, but all of them are within the chessboard. You can't get out of it. And that is the knowledge of Allah. You can't get out of the knowledge of Allah. So the water inside this cup is past present, and future. The water inside this cup is past, present, and future. The knowledge of Allah is the cup. Just to understand this from uh, an Aqidah perspective. That is, the knowledge of Allah is the cup. It holds everything. So, because Allah is the creator of time and space, He's not in time and space. So He doesn't have to wait for tomorrow as we have to wait for tomorrow because we're in time and space. Now, Everyone has choices. You go, you, door A, door B, door C. You go, oh, which one should I take? A, B, or C. You did take door A. You, you choose, it's, it's your choice. You can, so if you choose door A, that's your destiny. To, you, you, you're choosing it. Where are you going to end up? Then if you choose door B, right, that takes you to another place. And this is why in the day of judgment, you would see the director's cut. And everything in your life will make sense. You would see why things happen in your life. Why people say, well, you know, I lost my mom. Why did I lose? Un-? You would see on the day of judgment. You would see everything unveil on the day of judgment. In the famous story that Maulana says about the, the ant that's crawling on a Persian carpet. He said, there's an ant that's crawling on this beautiful Persian Afghani carpet, right? And it goes and it sees all these colors. It sees black, then it sees red, then it sees blue, then it sees green, then it sees yellow, then it sees white. It says, what is wrong with this person who made this carpet? What are these random colors? There's no pattern to it. There's, I get black, 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 white, green, blue, blue, green. It's, there's, I, then I get white, 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 green. It's, there's no pattern. There's nothing. It's just, who made this carpet? What was wrong with him? This is what the ant is complaining about the Persian carpet. And when the ant is picked up from the carpet and looks up from the top and see the design of the carpet, and then it says, oh my God, I didn't know these were flowers and pattern and geometric patterns and beautiful designs. I thought it was just random nonsense colors that the designer put on this carpet. And on the day of judgment, it's a day of awe and oohs. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It all makes sense. Everything will make sense to you because Allah is going to show you the carpets of your life. Everything will make sense. Everything will, the whole destiny will make sense because we see half now. We don't see the other half. And this is why you do what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about the, the people see, oh, I want to get into the mind of God. Don't worry about the, don't worry. About, my brother one time I asked him when I was young, I said, you know, does Allah know this? He said, why do you care about if Allah, about Allah's knowledge? Why, why do you want to know about that? Allah's told you to do something, do it. Do it to the best of your ability. This will drive you crazy. And, and that's what it is. Now, Iqbal has a poem 
and he says khudi ko kar buland itna ki har taqdeer se pehle khuda bande se khud puche bata tere raza kya hai he said that you should elevate yourself to a degree that you get so close to allah you become a, such a pious person that god will ask you oh my servant how do you want your destiny to be written right now you have a choice with your destiny how do you want you can change your destiny right become so pious that allah will tell you i can change your destiny how do you want it to be written tell me and i'll write it what this poem means and many people make a mistake in understanding this poem what this poem means that you should elevate yourself to the degree that you become a lover of god you become so close to allah that he says to you oh my servant how do, how do you want me to write your destiny to change it for you the way you want it and you would look and you would say i love it exactly as it is because you chose it for me because you chose it for me if you love allah you love your destiny if you love god you love your destiny this is the this is the relationship of human being with god is that you love god you love destiny you're okay with everything that he does everything that comes with it you're okay with it you're okay with it wallahi you're okay with it in in the masnavi has a rumi uh, mawlana rumi has a story about majnun and layla and and majnun wants to find out about what layla likes because layla was talking to majnun because i i got i got i got i want to hear her voice i want to i want her to talk to me so they say layla loves rubies you know this this red beautiful precious stone so he goes to layla's uh, by the layla's house and layla's in the balcony he doesn't pay any attention and then majnun puts her, the ruby on a rock layla from the old corner of her eyes looking because she loves rubies and then and then majnun picks up another rock and smashes it into pieces and layla comes in the balcony and shouts she goes oh you stupid fool why did you do that and majnun just burst out in laughter he said that's why i did it so you can tell me oh stupid fool why did you do that i just wanted to hear your voice i don't care what you say i don't care what you say and there are people like that with god they don't care whatever comes from him wallahi whatever comes from him it's beauty it's ihsan we don't see it we don't see it we see the thorn we don't see the rose in the thorn this is our problem we want to see everything now allah saying wait be patient i'll show you everything on the day of judgment and you will be amazed at your destiny you will be amazed at your destiny and this is what iqbal said he said that that if you if you knew your own destiny you would not have time to fall in love with anything in this world except falling in love with your own destiny because that's how how beautiful it is that's how beautiful it is so don't try to be these people to say you know what i i you know nobody you know gandhi said nobody no human being wants to be no soul of any human being wants to be in the body of another human being why right. because allah has put that in that that ghaira that, that this is this is me I, i'm even if i'm poor i i lo- i like you know this is it i don't want to be in somebody else's body the soul wants to be in its in its own cage so just be pleased with the decree of allah and know that you have a choice in life right but that choice is within the chessboard of of life as well right so the uh don't get depressed don't get depressed what we said at the beginning in the middle of the of the talk uh so live stream here um one second I need to do this one second. I need to go on the on the uh, Instagram. Just finished up, so I need to. Sorry. I'm not very savvy with the with these things. Oh. Okay, live. sorry um people on instagram forgive me so i don't think i don't know if i can go back live i might take a few minutes live can you tell me uh anyways mr john that's a, that's the answer to that question so maybe we can do the next question um okay uh, another question is uh 
another uh, brother says, my heart is pure and, my, uh, not, and I'm not bothering anybody and I don't pray and practice that much. Uh, I know Allah is Rahim. I'll, uh, hopefully he'll forgive me. Uh, what do you say about that? Is it just because, you know, I don't pray that much, but I'm a good person, good human being? Okay, that's, that's a very, uh, um, that's a good question. Um, we're back live on Instagram as well, so alhamdulillah. So uh, the question is, um, somebody said that I have a good heart. Uh, I don't harm anybody, but I don't practice that much. So, uh, you know, that's, it, 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 that, that was the question, right? Yes, yes. Okay. One of the nature of good heart is that you practice the religion. This is what a good heart, a pure heart would lead you because heart is a place Allah resides, right? You can't find him in the desert. You can't find him in the mountaintops. You can't find him in the, in the, in the, in the ocean. You can't find him in, in, in the skies, in the moon, and the sun. No. You can only find Allah in the heart of the, of the believers. And the, the hadith that the Rumi put into a poem, how wondrous it is that I am contained in the heart of the believers. If the purity is from the light of God, you can only do good. You can only worship God. That you would be a practice and it will lead you. And don't give up. You can trust me. There are people who struggle. It's hard. This world is hard. But if you sit and you do just a little bit every day, you know, I always, you know, there were some people that were not praying at all. And they're like, listen, I, I don't pray. I said, when you get out of show, you said, I, I can't make wudu and it's just so hard. And they were not interested in at all. Like, like literally these people, I don't know, like where they were at. So I said, listen, when you get out of shower, you're already in wudu. Just you make ghusl, you have shower. You can eat. Just when you get out of shower, just do two minutes of prayer. Just start with that. And Allah is my witness. Like that was the beginning. And it led to, you know, another two minutes. And he said, you know, two, three hours later, he still wasn't going to do it. It's the whole time he prayed. So start somewhere. There's a starting point for everybody. And don't put so much on your shoulder. Allah loves moderation. Just that shaitan loves extreme. Allah loves moderation. Shaitan loves extreme. Don't go to the extreme. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam beware. He said, "Beware of ulul din, extremism in your religion. Don't go to the extreme in your religion. So start a little bit and build gently. Build your life. Build your life. If your heart is good and you're not harming anybody, that means that the heart is ready to worship Allah. So you, if you're not worshiping, you're depriving that heart from from." Uh, from uh, what it's supposed to do, inshallah. Any other question or we're yeah, good? Yes, we have a lot of questions. I know we can't get through all of them, but a few more questions here, sir. Sure. Uh, another sister says, where do our thoughts come from? What is the source of our thoughts? Where is our thoughts stored? Is it internally or externally? Yeah, we, we actually talked about it yesterday on Instagram. The thoughts are come from four sources. I just summarized it. Uh, it's called Khawatir, Khawatir Rahmani, Khawatir uh, Malikani, Khawatir uh, Shaitani, Khawatir uh, Nafsani. So there's four sources of your thoughts. One is, uh, it comes from Allah, and then it comes from the angels, it comes from the nafs, the ego, the desire, your own desire, and it comes from Shaitan. These are only four sources that comes in. And those are, uh, you're supposed to, uh, those evil thought from shaitan and, and, and lazy thoughts from your nafs, you're supposed to kind of like, you know, suppress them and just not obey them. And you're supposed to obey the, the, the good thoughts that comes from Allah to do good, to command to do good, and the good thoughts from the angels to encourage you to do good. Those are the ones you're supposed to, uh, you're supposed to do the, uh, you know, just uh, obey those thoughts. So those are the four sources of thoughts, and, and, and it's very simple, straightforward. Uh, but it is, you know, you have to figure out like how, how, how to distinguish. I talked about it a couple of days ago on Instagram. We're going to put that video on Instagram, inshallah, probably tomorrow so we can, people can watch that in more detail. Uh, next question. Is it possible that we are shown to us during our first stage of our soul everything we will experience on earth? Or do we just bear witness Allah's oneness? Can you repeat that? I, I, I didn't sure. get it. Is it possible that we were shown to us, our first stage of our soul, everything we will experience on earth. 
or do we just bear witness with Allah's oneness? And Allah, uh, also, uh, us on earth, if we are spirituality sound, spiritual sound, can we tap into the, that experience? What is the concept okay. of yeah. deja vu? So the whole the whole point of the the path of the spirituality is to actually become all soul, to connect with that soul, that pure soul, where it it actually experiences seeing the the vision of God, right? And this is why the awliya and the saints they can they can see they can you know everywhere they look they're like I can see the the the, the presence of God everywhere. And this is the 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 two schools of spirituality. Wahdatul Wujud and Wahdatul Shuhud, which is it's a separate uh, topic and subject, but it, you know that that everything is 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 they they see God in everything, and then everything is you know, reminds them or, or 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 of God. But anyways, that is uh, uh, that's what you can do. So when you go on this path, the whole point of it is to connect with that soul. That's the whole point of spirituality is to connect with that soul. Rumi said, "Bayad ki jumla John shavi." He said, you have to become all soul in order to be worthy, right, of God. In other words, you have to remove the desires of the body and dig inside and travel inward and, and become one with your soul. And once you become that, then you're qualified to be with in the in the presence of God, because the soul is always in the presence of God. The soul, every night we go to sleep, they leave and they go to the malakut. They go, they they leave this this reality, right? Because they need their risk and their their food, and, and then they come back, right? Because they <laughs> this is they can't handle this, you know. So the the this is how you connect. And Rumi said, just like if you go to a gathering where everybody is drinking, you better be intoxicated. Because they won't allow you in. That's a dunya, right? And that's a dunya. And then the ukhrawi, the hereafter gathering, you have to become all soul. You have to remove the desires from, from, from yourself, inshallah. And then in that way, you can, you can be worthy of, of seeing the divine. All right, and John, I have a question. Hopefully we can wrap up with this. Um, you talked about having the inward journey into yourself. What are some best practices or actions that we can do in order to make that journey? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, the question is about uh, taking the inward journey. What are the practices we can do to take inward journey? Uh, some of the, the easiest thing to do is, is start having some uh, um, uh, quiet time because we are distracted with so much noise. You know, Rumi said, uh, listen to silence because it's teaching you a lot. It has a lot to say. And people are not used to being in silence. So, you know, go somewhere without headphones, without anything. You don't even have to read. Don't, you know, just don't stress over these things that you have to take a book and read. Start with just going and reflecting and sit and do nothing for 15, 20 minutes. Start making that practice. Just think about yourself, who you are, what happened to you, the best experience of your life, the things that really keep, kept you happy, the most pure experience with your parents, with your friends, with your uh, uh, you know, spouse, with your children, or whatever it is. So start with that as a, as a, as just to get to know yourself and what makes you happy, what makes you joyful, what gives you pleasure, what, all of that. And then you start seeing things and then you will keep going. And it's, it's a journey. It's not overnight. It's not fast food. It's a journey. And if you keep doing that 15 minutes, then to 20 minutes, then to 30 minutes, and the third. And then the goal of life is within two years or three years, you get to an hour a day, me time. It's your time. Then once you go from silence, then you will go to reading. From reading, you go to thicker. From thicker. So it's, it's, a, it's step by step. Then when you're reading, you're also in a state of silence. And it's beautiful once you get to that level. It's absolutely amazing. Then you're making dhikr in your state of silence as well. It's an amazing, it's, these, are, these are stations that you can, everybody can get. It's not, hard, it's not impossible, but it's not easy either, right? So start with just silence and just reflecting. And then a lot of people, like if you live in, like people who are in California or living in Sydney or beautiful places that has nature, to go out in the nature and reflect, go by the water, reflect on the ocean because oceans are reflection of the ocean inside of you right right this is the you know uh, 
Nolana Rumi said that, you know, we are like a drop that once we fall into the ocean, then the ocean becomes the drop. Not that we become the ocean, the ocean becomes us. That's how powerful this drop is. He said, within the drop of the water of a human being, there are seven massive oceans in and inside of it. So uh, just to figure yourself out, know yourself and go, just think about all of the blessing. Think about who you are. Think about the times you were supposed to die, like literally like accident almost happened, this, that. How, why did Allah save you? And those are the things really for me, like why did Allah save me so many times? I had accident two, three times in a car. I should have died. While just just those like to be grateful and those things will push you to become better human being to do ibadah to serve to to worship to read Quran to do all of these stuff uh, through those those uh, experiences inshallah. Um, there's I think a question here from uh, Instagram. We respect during the. Uh, it's the same question that we answered it. Okay. Uh, Final John, another question is, um, and I'm, sure, I'm not sure if you've answered this already, but if all of our destiny is written by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is the purpose of dua? Why do we make dua then? Yeah, the dua. Uh, so the thing is that, again, this, this is how we shouldn't think from God's perspective, think from your perspective, look at the world from your perspective. Iqbal said your dua is not there to change your destiny, but it's there to change you. It is there to change you. So you are content with your, with, uh, with your destiny, that you're pleased with your destiny, right? And this is the, see the thing is about, people need to understand this. Everybody needs to make dua. Because dhikr in awrad, like people had awrad words that they did in the morning. Like a lot of people now that I know, they do word latif in the morning. They do word ratib shahir in the evening. Uh, people did dalai al-khayrad daily. And, you know, you know people, suri yaseen and waqi and mulk. And, you know, at least the least you can do, like even during the pandemic, like people, there are people who don't do any dhikr. But at least you can do is bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'asmi shayun fil ardi wa la fi sama huwa samiul alim three times. In Audhu bi kalimati la itamati min shari ma khalaq three times. Like these things are protection. Now, if you do a word, right? If you do a word, what it does, it puts a shield around you. It protects you. Now, there are certain things that are meant for you that no matter what happens, it won't miss you, right? Like death. If it's time for you to die, no matter what happened, it doesn't, it's done. The time is appointed and it's done, right? It's an appointment and it cannot be put forward or delayed or canceled. Now, what happens with awrad is you're driving on the freeway, coming home. And right by, in the middle of the freeway as you're driving, right? You get a flat tire. You get a flat tire, your car goes everywhere. Another car comes and hits you in the back. And uh, they, it just, you get hurt. And all. what awrad, the will do, you have the flat tire, but once you exit, so there's no accident, and it's it's a protection, it's a it's a shield that comes around you. So this is why we do all those awrad, why we do these these words in the morning. So when we leave, that we are protected from these things that that is coming towards us. There's things that are coming. So then you know it's like it's like if you walk naked on the street, right? How how much would you would you come home in the evening? And I hope nobody goes naked on the street. Uh, you come home with all these bruises. Why? Because everything you touch it is going to hurt you. But if you wear clothing, right, you're going to protect yourself. But what if there's uh, a riot and people are throwing rocks? What are you going to do? Well, if you have a helmet and you have like chain mails, then you go. They they can throw the rocks. It's not going to hurt you. But those people who don't have it, it's going to hurt them. The same thing. This is what du'as are. Du'as are like 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 helmets. That the spiritual helmets that you put on, that it it protects you from those unnecessary things that supposed it hits you, but gentler. Just you know, like like we said, the the uh, the uh, the flat tire will happen when you exit instead of happening on the freeway. So those are the beauty. That's the beauty of of du'a, inshallah. So. Uh, it's, uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Ad-du'a silahul mu'min And Allah can do whatever he wants Listen In terms of destiny God says Fa'alun lima yurid 
God can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. There's a story of a, of a, of a, of a man who everybody used to say that he's going to hell in the, in the community. Everybody said, this man is hellbound. He used to do a lot of wrong. He was a sinner, bad man in the community. And then um, and the day of judgment came. And the whole, all of the people run and said, whoa, let's point it to this man to Allah. Say, Allah, throw this man in hell. And Allah said, uh, why don't all of you guys go to hell and this man go to paradise? And they say, Allah, what, what do you mean? Like, we were the good people. And he said, no. Why did you close the door on him when he said, oh, were you God? Were you God? Why did you get, you know, why are you thinking like God that you're, oh, I'm God and I'm going to say this man is going to hell? How do you know? I can forgive him. I can do whatever I want. I forgave him. I put him in paradise. And I'm not going to forgive you guys. I'm going to throw you in hell because you put me in a box. People who put God in a box, oh, God would never forgive you, brother. You did all this wrong. Sister, you did all this wrong. God would never forgive you. Those people will have a hard time in the Yom al or with God. They will have a hard time. Don't play God. Play human being. You're a human being. You're ajiz. You're someone who has no no power over anything. The only power we have is over ourselves. And most of us, we don't even have that over ourselves. We are, our, our nafs and our ego and our desire is devouring us. So don't stress over these things about, you know, condemning people and this and that. Do your du'as. Protect yourself. There's a protection, right? Do your du'a. Allah can do whatever he wants. Remember that. Allah can do whatever he wants. And he has taken sinners made them saints saints and, and this is this is in our tradition we have tons of it and inshallah we're, we're planning to do a course on that subject as well so people can see the hope of all these people who are really horrible people in life and then they turn uh turn around made toba and then they become saints of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can take one more and then we'll wrap it up question please and if there's no question then we can wrap it up yeah, a, a sister asked a question. She says um, about makeup in wudu. It's basically if I have uh, makeup on and I need to do wudu again, do I have to wash off that makeup even if I did wudu prior to that? What do you What do you suggest? Yeah, if you have wudu, then you don't need to make wudu again. Uh, this this uh, once you have wudu, make wudu one time. You can use the same wudu until you break it for one, two, three, four, five. Pray the whole day. You can pray with that wudu. Uh, so you don't have to make wudu again. On the on on the on the thing. Now they have these other makeup that are uh, what they call that the, the, the water penetrates through and things of that nature as well, where you can you can wash where you know it doesn't it's not doesn't get removed with water. Uh, but uh, the the water is supposed to reach the face. Uh, face is far into in on in in wudu. Uh, four things in our madhab is far, which is face, uh, washing the face, the hands to the elbows in massa your head, and uh, in washing the feet. Those four things are mandatory. If you miss any of those, your wudu is in Uh Like if you miss your mouth, washing your mouth, or your nose, or the ears, or the neck, or this, uh, you still, your wudu is still balad. Uh, because those, some of them are sunnah, some are adab, some are mustahab. So they're not mandatory. What's part of those four in the Hanafi, based on uh, chapter 5, I 6 of the Quran. And, um, all right, Jazakallah Khair, thank you yeah. very much. May Allah reward all of you for listening, for being here. It's late night. I know most people in the East Coast is, uh, is uh, past midnight. So uh, I thank you, and we went on for too long. So um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for anything wrong that I might have said. Anything good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect all of you and increase you and protect our teachers and our friends and our families during this pandemic. And may he heal all of those people who are struggling with this disease right now with coronavirus. May Allah heal them. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimin, because with him, everything is easy. And may Allah remove this and make this a means that people come to Allah and come to understanding uh, his power, inshallah, and, and to turn and make tawbah, inshallah, and be, become better human beings and people who would do good for their communities and their society.